Greetings and uh, welcome to another video with Better Picks. Hope this finds everyone well. Today I wanted to create just a short video around workflow uh, and particularly with Adobe Bridge and the process and options that you have for sorting your files. There's a number of scenarios where you may find uh, working with these tools to be helpful, um, which we'll be going through and I'll uh, chat about today. Uh, but the main reason is just to help speed up your workflow, be able to find images quickly and easily, and uh, just help the overall process of getting your images from their original raw state to where you want them to be, whether that's edited for print or edited for publication or any output really. So I've just got here um, a folder of raw images that I normally use for creating the BetterPix videos. And it's a number of images that are shot um, using different cameras at different times uh, and different file formats. So you can see here we've got uh, some .cr2 uh, raw files, which are Canon files. You can see we've got uh, some .dng files, uh, which has as part of the uh, file name DJI, so they, they're photographed using my drone. And we also have .raf files, which is a Fuji file, uh, Fuji raw file format. So different cameras shot at different times, um, everything from uh, 2015 I think is the earliest image right through to uh, photographed relatively recently so let's have a look at the options so all I've got here is uh, a folder of raw images um, with uh, 20 files or 20 images within that folder if we go up to the top right hand side here you can see currently there's a little tab there sort by date created and there's a little arrow as a drop down box so currently, those images are sorted by the date that they were originally photographed. Obviously, that date and time is embedded in the metadata in the file, assuming that the date and time is correct, uh, that you have set up in your camera. Um, and it's currently, uh, Bridge is currently working off uh, that date and time to sort them by date created. Now, where this is particularly handy is if, say, for example, you're photographing an event or you're on a trip somewhere or, or, or any situation where you may be photographing with two cameras, this means that when you download your images into a particular folder, say, for example, uh, similar to here where I have a raw images folder where all of my raw images go, it means that you can sort those images by the date created. Now, it does mean that your uh, date and time on both of your cameras needs to be synchronized. If one camera is a week different uh, on the dates or even a few hours different um, on the timestamp that's embedded into the camera then obviously you're going to run into issues of the cameras not uh, sorry the images not running chronologically to each other so it's important that you do have both cameras uh, synced uh, time wise and now this used to be uh, a really good option when i used to photograph a lot of weddings because i would um, often have an assistant or second shooter and they would be photographing on one or two cameras as well so we could have up to four cameras running in on the one event or the one uh, wedding and it just meant that uh, when uh, time came for editing I could sort by the date created assuming that those three or four cameras were all synced time wise so before you start um, always make sure that the time and date stamp on your cameras is the same and that way when you drop the photographs into uh, bridge or um, into Lightroom then you can sort them by the date created and they will run uh, perfectly and chronologically so it's very easy to keep track of all the images that you have from a particular location or date and time so that's just a handy little tip for you to consider if you are photographing those sort of events or as I mentioned even if you're going on a trip away somewhere and you're carrying two cameras with you make sure the times are synced and you'll be able to easily uh, chronologically sort your photographs at the end of the trip so if we just click that little drop down box or that drop down arrow you can see that you also have the option to uh, sort the images by file name um, which if you have the images named specifically within your camera which you have the option to do for some cameras then you can sort them by the file name that was created by type 
So in this situation, for example, we have different three different raw file formats and you can sort them uh, by those different formats. Uh, you can also, as I mentioned, date created, date modified. So if you've edited some of your images and you want to go directly to the images that have been edited, you can say sort them by that, uh, by the date that they were modified, by size, by dimension, by resolution, by color profile, by label rating. So the rating is uh, obviously the uh, star rating that you give the images and you can also sort them by uh, label, uh, which is the one I just mentioned earlier, but label is the color label that you give it to give to the, uh, the images. Uh, and the, the last option or second last option is you can sort by keywords. So when you enter your keywords into the metadata in the images, which I'll be making a video about very shortly, uh, you can sort by keywords as well. Uh, and the last option is to sort manually. So say for example, if uh, we'll go back to date created, say for example, if you wanted to change the order of these particular images, all you need to do is click and drag that image to a different location within the list as I'm doing here, and you can see it automatically changes over to sorting manually. So that's a great uh, option if you, uh, even if you've sorted your images chronologically and they're all correct for when they were shot, you can still change the order of those images uh, based on any need that you may have um, and specific reason, uh, which really at the end of the day doesn't matter too much. So as you can see, um, you can sort the order of your images um, uh, based on any parameter that you can possibly imagine, which is a great thing because now that we're all shooting, or the most of us are shooting digital, or if we're shooting film and we're um, processing digitally after scanning the film, it means that we can really take active steps to sort through our images quickly and easily. And it's very, very good if you're in a position where you're photographing a lot of images. If you're just show, photographing or shooting day to day in your local area, you may not be producing that much work. But if you've got a big trip away somewhere and you photograph a lot of images, it's very easy then to uh, look at sorting those images in a way uh, that helps your workflow, uh, particularly from a speed and efficiency perspective, which I think we can all agree, uh, any help with speed and efficiency for sorting through our images is a good thing. One last point that I wanted to make is um, you can obviously uh, also sort your images as an example. You can combine the sorting process with the selection process. So if say for example I sort by date created, you can then come down to the filter on the bottom left hand side and select your image based on the date that they were created. So you've sorted all of the images out in chronological order by selecting sort by date created you can then go to the date created filter down on the bottom left hand side and select a specific date and you have just the images in chronological order that were photographed on that particular day so some really handy tools there to help you uh, with organizing your images and uh, yeah certainly help to speed things up a little bit hope you found this video helpful uh, as always, if you have any questions or topics that you would like covered, please leave a comment uh, down below and look forward to seeing you stopping by in the future. Take care.